Hi, I'm Lou Ann Hammond, DrivingTheNation.com. I'm here with Thomas Dattelbio. He is the manager for test and validation for Continental. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm good. Good to see you again. Thank you. You know, Same. last time we talked, you guys had LiDARs, but now you have flashed LiDARs. Dun, da, da. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty exciting. Yes, it is pretty exciting. And the one is already in serious production for many years, and we had gained great experience about how our environment looks in LiDAR, yes. in infrared. But that's and kind of a scanning LiDAR. No, that back then it was also pulsing, Yes. but it was using just three beams, so we got only a very crude picture of what's in front, and it was designed to avoid rear end collisions. Oh. So especially with three beams on a rear of a vehicle, we got the scene covered and it successfully it reduced the amount of rear end collision significantly in the field. We get this feedback from the insurance companies, so that was a very good success. So did the insurance company say, gosh, we really like that, if it's on the car, we'll reduce their yeah, interest actually, rate? Actually, some insurance companies are working together with the OEMs offering such systems and they give a discount Wonderful. because they see the numbers right. going down having this system. Great. But this is already mass production in the market. Now we, we notch it up a bit because we really want to see not just three beams, we want to really see the full scenery in a very precise resolution in 3D to allow modern cars, especially the ones who should operate autonomously, uh, with a good perception of the scenery in front. So this, this will be on the autonomous vehicles, but maybe even before that. This is the no, beginning. we are aiming for, for a market start in 2020 when okay. those vehicles most likely will enter the market. Mm -hmm. And what you can see here is our latest prototype uh, nicely blended in at the corner of the vehicle. We have here an opening angle of 120 degrees allowing us to really give a wide image, wide angle image of the vicinity of the vehicle. Right. Reaching out as far as 30 meters, detecting everything from a pole from a tree, pedestrian, bicycle riders, even lane markings, or even more complex structures like in construction sites. So Completely let me just get this yeah. straight then. The last one had three beams going out. Yes. But this one has... That house. has thousands of pixels thousands. that are waiting for the laser light to come back. Right. And you can see here, that's actually where the laser flash exits the device. So it's a nanosecond laser pulse going out, we know exactly when it's leaving, so we can detect it reliable when it's bouncing back from whatever object has reflectivity for us, and we measure the time in between and uh, nature constant time of flight, uh, you know the speed of light, and then you know exactly how far away in centimeter range uh, something is. Oh great, so it's really done with mathematical computation. Yeah, it's physics yeah. as it is, yes. uh, engineered into a car and you can really see the 3D uh, world because an object far away, the pulse would arrive later. Okay, so I'm thinking of this and like if, I, if I'm somebody that's driving along, the first thing I'm thinking of is there's going to be a mosquito that hits this and blows out the whole flat flash, the whole LiDAR. What, <laughs> so, do you, what do you do to protect that? So what do you mean by the in, entering the laser beam? Well, no, it's going to fall, or, it's going to fall right on top of it. Yeah. No, I mean, we keep it open here that you can admire our technology and our engineering. So there is a but cover on But in reality, on there will be, of course, a cover that will be easy to clean the same like with headlines. Yeah, you would, headlights, you would spray something, uh, the mosquito dirt would go off. But of course, if you enter a swarm of mosquitoes and it's all blocked all of a sudden and nothing helps, we can detect this. We can notify the driver of, hey, our sensor is blocked. So please clean it, please stop it at the next gas station and don't rely on that function at the moment. So that's our concept. If we cannot resolve it, we at least have to let the driver know that we have here an impact in performance. It's a wonderful idea. Now, I, we talked uh, yesterday with some of your executives, and they said that this new flash LiDAR, along with the radar, along with the tire sensors, gives you more of a computational algorithm for, for autonomous vehicles than you've ever had before. So, uh, maybe not the, the algorithm itself. What we provide is an additional information that blends in together with the information gained by radar and by usual cameras. So usual cameras are subject to blinding effects when there's a low sun facing us when we're driving into it. Our LiDAR system 
is not impacted that because we are sending out our own light and the sun has some infrared but not enough to blind us. So we really see independently. So our image of the environment looks day, night, at fog, during dust, looks the very same because we are independent of environment illumination. And that's the additional information that we provide to such a smart system. So there will be a central unit combining all this information. But of course, if all sensors are not providing anything, they are doomed. So that's why we make sure that with LiDAR, with radar and camera, there's always information coming there. And, and if the one... those tire sensors. Yeah, and also the tire <laughs> sensors, of course, yeah, sure. All right, Thomas, thank you very much. You're welcome, thank you.